Okay, I think we'll get started. Um, firstly, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today for and being part of Dairy and Stavang Council's Enterprise Week. Um, now, this webinar is being recorded, so you'll be able to watch it back on Council's YouTube channel in a couple of days. Uh, if you have any questions, we're going to please put them in the Q&A box. You'll see it the, along the toolbar on your screen, and we'll go through them at the end. Um, if you're using social media, please hashtag EW2022. Um, I'm going to pass over to Mary now, who's going to discuss the Mary Kew Academy journey. Now, I met Mary yesterday for the first time, and I must say I'm amazed at her positive mindset. It was really, really great talking to her. I've um, got a quick presentation, just going to flip through and kick off then when Mary's ready. That's over to you now, Mary. Thank you very much, Nicole. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm absolutely honoured to be given this webinar this morning, and thank you all for joining. So my name is Mary, and I am a motivational speaker, and I am also a coach. Um, I'll just give you a wee bit about my background. I began my journey uh, to where I am today and it began on a personal journey for me um, and a very, very probably raw journey where I began to unravel the old Mary, the old habits, the old beliefs and the old patterns of who I was and the person that I didn't like. I, I felt very, very stuck in a place that I could see no way out. Um, I am a mother of four adult children and three grandchildren. And I felt that was me, that was my life. And yet I felt very, very empty inside, but something deep inside me felt there was something more in me to give. So I began a, a journey of unraveling the old habits and behaviors and patterns that we all accumulate and we all bring them together through our process in life. And those thoughts are our self-belief, our values, our worths are not enoughs. Um, and we sometimes take these along our journey and these unwanted gifts at times that we may be given begin at a very young age um, from almost the, the minute we're conceived right through. And we pick up the, the habits and the behaviors and patterns of our peers, our parents, or what, whatever or whoever may be in, in our presence. So I began that journey and, you know, it was a very, very lonely journey. I had to unravel how I seen myself and I had to begin to ask myself what values I had for me. What was it that I wanted for me? And I really believe that as I unraveled, I had something more to give. And I began a journey of educating myself and self-development. And although it was a very lonely journey for me at the time, it took me on a journey of self-belief, self-worth, values, and I began to create goals and visions for who and what I wanted to become. And I knew that I was passionate about women and men, and I knew that we all have this, this within us that we don't even tap into, the qualities, the passion, the self-belief, the values, and all these tools that I had, I began to ignite. And I began on a very rocky road, to tell you the truth, um, on my business path. Um, I was total greenhorn, didn't know how to go about it. And to be honest, I began my journey on social media. And it was a bit buddy and a bit iffy. But I really believed in what I was doing because I had now created the woman that I had wanted to become. I became a very strong, confident, um, and yet very humble woman. And I knew all that I had learned and all that I had journeyed in my process in life um, was leading me on a path to create for me a business. 
And yes, I created a business, um, the Mary Kew Academy. And that academy began by individuals coming to me um, for coaching um, in business, in their personal life and in their family life. And I began to see that there was a really clear thing that we all we all suffered from was the lack of self-belief in who we, we are. I also found out, and probably I, I'll ask you this question now, you know, who am I? You know, when my clients come, the first thing I say, who are you? And we really stumble with that. We really struggle to answer that question. So, you know, are you on here today? And do you really know who you are? Do you really know what you want in life? Do you really know what your dream is, what your passion is, what your goal is? Or do you feel stuck? Do you feel that you're sticking to the ground and you can't move in the direction that you really want to go? Um, for me, I have taken women on a journey and some women that have begun a journey of creating their own business. And I have quite a few young women that have created their own businesses and they began with a dream. They began with a vision. I always ask them, if you had a magic wand, what would you want for you? What would be your ideal dream, your goal? What is your passion? And after a while, they come back with a very clear pinpoint. Some of them have opened up their hairdressers. Some of them have opened up coffee shops. Some of them have opened flower shops. Some of them have gone back to school to re-educate themselves. And that is their goal. That was their goal to do that, to open their coffee shop, to own it, to be, to be part of something that they knew they loved and were passionate about. So they created that goal. They identified it. They wrote the vision of that goal down, how they seen it, how they felt it, who was there and what was there. And that goal was left aside because I do believe that goal is achievable. But we have to go back to basics and we have to go back and create the person that we want that is going to stand in that job. And, you know, a lot of us suffer from that syndrome of always looking to see what other people are doing. We're always joking to see. We always put our dream in somebody else's hand when we say, oh, I, I, I would love to do this. And the minute somebody says, catch yourself on, you couldn't do that there. That's not for you. Then we recall back and again, and we feel we're not enough. We feel that they know better for us than we actually do. Nobody, and I mean nobody knows better for you than yourself. Nobody knows what makes you tick, only yourself but we become so disconnected with who we are. We don't trust who we are. Our biggest game changer is ourselves. And you know, you have to journey that journey and you have to begin a journey of believing that you can and understanding that no matter what, you must be disciplined in what you want for your life. And it doesn't have to be a massive, um, a massive job or a math it's a goal that is achievable for you and um, and that goal may be if you're in the workplace and you're looking for a promotion but you feel you're not good enough for that promotion why do you feel you're not good enough for that promotion because you have told yourself constantly that you are not good enough for that promotion when we go into the workplace are we really happy in that workplace? Are we happy in that environment? Are we always looking to see what everybody else is doing? Are we placing our life in our hands and all that we know in somebody else's hands to create and design that job for us? You are your own competition. You, the person that looks back in you in the mirror each day, is the person that will direct you in your life, will create the life that you want for you. But you must trust that person that looks back at you in the mirror. You know, we go through life and we dream we want to be this and we want to be that. And as we go through life, we allow 
things in life to knock us down. We allow comments, we allow people's behaviours, we allow the environment that we're in to knock us down and keep telling us, no, not good enough for that, I can't do that. You can be and do and create whatever you want in your life. And I don't care what job or position that you want, you have the right to go and to see yourself on that path. But we forget that we have to be very, very disciplined in what we want in life. When we want something in life, when I say discipline, we have to create the environment within us that we see ourselves in that environment, in that job, in that place of work, and we are thriving and growing and we're bringing so much to that in place of employment. A lot of us go on to work and we go on to work and we think, oh, it's great money, grand money. And we focus on the money aspect. Yes, we all need money, 100%. We all need money. Can I go to the shop without a pound to buy a loaf of bread? You wouldn't even get that now for a pound. But what I'm saying to you is, you must be very, very disciplined in your thoughts to, towards what you want in life, what you want, forget about everybody else around you. This is your life. This is what you want. Stop looking out and seeing what other people are doing, what they're focused on, because at the start when I began, I, I was very, very guilty of that. I was looking at this one and that one and how they were doing it. And why wasn't I doing it? Why wasn't I doing it? Because I was more interested in seeing what other people were doing in their lives, with how they were creating their lives. But that wasn't for me. But I became so preoccupied in other people's business. And I became so preoccupied in how they were doing it and why I wasn't doing it. And when I came back and then myself, when I stopped that and I put the blankers on, because you must have blankers on in your life, you must be focused on what you want, not what everybody else wants for you, but what you want for your life. And I began to concentrate on Mary, what Mary had to give to the business, what Mary was giving to people, what Mary was getting from people because it's a two-way street. And I was not allowing other people's negativity, um, grumpiness, moodiness, hate this job, don't want this job. I, I began to block all those things out because you see, I was passionate in what I wanted to do. My passion was to allow people to unravel and to create the life that they wanted for themselves. Now, sometimes the promotion or the job or whatever mightn't come quick enough for us. We might get impatient and we might say, this isn't for me, and we fall back into whole habits and behaviour. I really believe at those times, those are the times that we must remain focused and really controlled in our thoughts and what we want for who we are. You know, no man is an island. Of course, we need everybody we need to interact and we need to be part of a, a workplace we need to be part of the culture that that is but that doesn't mean to say that I lose myself in that culture you know we are all we are all individuals we all think you know in different ways even though in the grand scheme of things it all comes back to the one thing but how I see things and it's the perception of how we see it how I see things may not be how you perceive to see your, your place in the workplace. I really believe if you are really unhappy in your workplace, if you're struggling every day to get up and you feel that bounce of, I'm looking forward to getting to work, I enjoy my work, then you've got to ask yourself, it's not the work environment, it's what you have allowed, what you've taken in on yourself and what story you've created about your work environment and how you see yourself on it. Not everybody else, but you. We get lost in this murky water of he said, she said, and I'm not happy and she got that promotion and I should have got that promotion. Do you ever ask yourself, there was a reason why I didn't get that promotion? It wasn't for me, maybe. There's something better coming down the track or I just wasn't ready to step into that place. You know, you are responsible, as am I, we are all responsible for how we present ourselves, either in the workplace, either in our own business. And 
as an individual. And all those things must marry up. And it's like, if you have a dream, a passion, and you're on here today, and you really want to go for that dream, you've got to ask yourself, what is it that's holding me back? What is it in me that is stopping me from taking that leap of faith to a place where I know that that's where I'm going to be my best? Or are you afraid to fail? Are you afraid to let people down? Are you afraid that you're not enough? Failure can also be in some way a path to your progress. We always see failure as a really bad thing. Failure is a thing, sometimes it protects us from going deeper and there's something that we cannot cope with. Do you really value who you are? Do you understand the man or the woman that you are? Do you believe wholeheartedly in the woman and man that you are? And for anyone out there that is an entrepreneur or that is beginning a new business and your business is doing well and everything that you put your handy turns to gold, and then you become very lax and you start handing your business over to somebody else to create, to go forward with. And you sit back and think, well, I've done it now. Let them take over. That's not the attitude to have. Always remember that business was your passion, was your dream, was your goal. And you must keep your eye constantly on that goal. That is not somebody else's goal to run and play with. That is your goal. And sometimes we see in business that people, when they create the business and they think it's going really well, and you see them then, they're lunching here and they're taking days off here and they're handing it on to somebody else. And then that business is slowly sliding. You see, that business isn't somebody else's dream or passion or goal. That business is your passion. That business is your goal. That business is your livelihood. And yet you've taken your eye of the ball because at some stage you thought, my business is going really well here. I'm doing brilliant. Slack off, hand it over and let them do. Never take your eye off your goal, of your passion, of your dream. Never hand your goal or your passion or your dream into somebody else's care. Yes, we do need people that will, will help us move our business on and further it on. But if your business is going wrong and it's not doing well, then you have to sit back and ask, what part have I played in that business? What part have I played in that downfall? And yes, I know the economy and all that has a big, big effect on it. But in the grand scheme of things, if you're passionate, if you're driven, if you know this is what you want and what you have, you must protect, you must nurture, you must grow, and you must continue to believe in your goal, in your passion, in your dream. That job is not for anybody else to take over. That is your job. Your job is to create, to grow, and to nurture, and continue with that right through the process and keep your eye constantly on that goal of that vision that you began very, very early on. Because everything begins with the dream. Everything begins with the passion. This chair I'm sitting on, somebody dreamed this up. This just did not appear. Somebody had a dream, had a vision. But if I got this and that and that, I could make a chair and somebody could sit on it. This jacket that I'm wearing, somebody had a vision for that jacket. This computer that I, I'm on here with, somebody had a vision and a, a passion to create that. And they carried it through. And they've become very wealthy people because they did not take their eye off the ball. That was their goal. That was their dream. And that was their passion. You know, we go through life and we say, oh, it doesn't work. Then we have to ask ourselves, why didn't it work? What part in my life did I partake in the downfall of my dream, of my goal, of my passion, of my vision. You know, sometimes we get very carried away by when, you know, we see the pound signs and we see all those and it's going up and up and up and we think, I'm doing well, I'm doing brilliant. And we start falling back. That's the time when you double up your focus, your attention and your passion for that dream that you created all those years ago. 
and there is another thing when you're working and you're a family you're a husband you're a wife you're a mother you're a father your job should not overtake that family time that you should have with your family if your job is taken over precious time that should be spent with your children and your wife or your your husband then there's something seriously wrong there's something wrong in the running of your business there's something wrong where your focus is constantly driven to that place there should always be a happy medium because remember your family are paramount in your life they should be the focus on which the they should benefit from the from all that's coming from your business and i'm not even meaning financially i'm meaning that there should be a time to leave your work behind your work should not be going on 24 hours a day seven days a week that is wrong and then you run ragged and before you know it your children are up and away and they've had no quality time because mommy or daddy's business or work was more important than their children your children are very very precious you are given the gift of those children to nurture to grow and to love and you must find a balance between work and family work yes it is important but on the opposite scale of that so is your family so you know when you're beginning and you are struggling and there's a lot of people struggling within their business within their work because they are lost they have lost themselves to figures to different personalities to struggling to get products out to struggling to meet deadlines why because you are worn out trying to be everything to this job you cannot be everything to your job a job is somewhere that provides for you that that excites you that you should look forward to go and being part of like you should be developing your your skills and all that you are but when time comes there should be a certain time in your day where you stop and say today I, i'm leaving that there work should be left in work and when you go through those doors at home that is your time for family. We're so afraid of losing a job. We're so afraid that figures don't add up. We're so afraid that the product's not right. And so we become so lost in all the what ifs, could have, should have. Instead of believing, really believing in who you are and saying to yourself, this is going to work. I'm going to give this my best. And when you give something your best and you're focused and you're disciplined in your business or your workplace, and at the end of the day, come five or six o'clock, you switch off. You have given all that you can give to that day. If you're in a business or a place of work that you're not happy and you're only there to meet your bills, then you're doing yourself a real service. Because I do believe there is a place for each and every one of us in this society. There's a place for us that we can go and enjoy work and love work and feel that we are giving something back to the community, to the world, to the environment. So when we struggle at work, you've got to ask yourself, what is it about me? What is it in me that I'm struggling with? What is it that in me that I hate getting up in the morning? I hate going into that place. I hate the people I work with. I hate what I have to do, but I need to pay bills. There is a job out there for each and every one of you. We're not stuck in that one place. And if you don't begin to look outside that environment that is caging you in, that is leaving you blocked in and you feel stuck and you're strangling and you're losing who you are and your self-worth, then you have got to step back and start nurturing, protecting and loving the person that you are and believing that there is something better out there for you. That job may not be for you. And when you start to have doubts and you start to have all those negative feelings and, and emotions about a job or a position that you're in, then you have 
got to be honest with yourself and you have got to believe that there is something better out there. And that's where you start to go and seek advice and look for other positions and places of employment. You should never, ever be unhappy in your place of employment. You should never struggle to see a day through in your place of employment. When you're in employment, you should never be looking to see what the next one's doing. Your big, biggest competition is yourself. You, number one. When you keep looking and keep focus on you, when you start to direct all that you desire and hope for to that person that's looking back at you at the mirror, because you see, I'm a firm believer, that person that looks back at you each day in that mirror has all your answers, will never let you down, will never turn their back on you and will stand by you no matter what. We're so afraid to stand as an island on our own. We're so afraid. We feel that we need, we need confirmation. We need a pat on the back. We need to be told, yes, it's nice to be told we're doing well on that. But if you're constantly thriving for it, if that's what you're constantly seeking, then there's something very much lacking in yourself. Of course, it's lovely to get a compliment, but don't live your life looking for compliments, looking for the pat on the back and saying, you're doing well, keep that up. Or if you see somebody else and they're being told you're doing a brilliant job you're in, and you're getting angry and you're getting frustrated and you're getting, they never tell me that. Wish them well, wish them well, but don't allow a negative reaction or feeling because of somebody else has been told they're doing a good job. Your time will come. But you've got to start believing in all that you are, all that you are. And if you have a dream, if you have a passion to create and start your own business, well, stop leaving it in the back boiler. Stop leaving it way back there that you might dip on and out of it now and again and say, oh, wouldn't it be nice or wouldn't it be lovely? Everything's nice and lovely. Start taking action. Start believing in yourself. I've seen the change in so many people that have created their business, have gone back to school and have started to believe that they can be and do whatever they want to be. You panic about money. You worry about money. When you have a vision and a goal and you start to really believe and you start to really become involved in that goal and that passion, I honestly can tell you, that money will start to come to create that goal, to create that passion. There's so much help out there to, for upstart new businesses that, you know, you're not on your own. Don't sit on a dream or a goal of a, a job or something that you know is going to work because you're doing yourself on the service. And stop sharing your goal and your dream with, Sometimes your nearest and dearest, your family can be the worst and tell you to catch yourself on, catch yourself on, you've got a job, you've enough to get on with. Stop allowing people to quash and stamp on your dream or your goal or your passion. That is yours to nurture, to grow, to create, to really protect and to watch it grow, to bloom and to become and then to step on it. You are your own creator. Nobody's going to create your life, only you, unless you hand the keys of your life over to somebody else to create the life that you want for you. That's not your job. Your job is to create and to unravel all that is on your path because we all have a path. And I do believe that what is on that path is either for us to create or destroy. We have choices. But if we continually have ideas and that idea, and then we go and say, everybody hear this here, I have an idea. And somebody says, catch yourself on, you EGG, you EGG, you have a job, stay there. Or you tell somebody your idea and they say, no, that's not good. No, nah, not going to work. Six, seven months later down the line, that same person has created that job, that idea. I have seen it happen. If you're creating or there's a dream when you are wanting to create and become, protect it, nurture it, and feed it. 
you know, it's just not going to happen overnight. You must do the work. You must do the investigation. You must see where the place is for the stream or the school in your life. And if you see that and you feel it and you taste it and you touch it, my advice for you, you go for it. But protect your goal, protect your dream. And that goes the same for anybody that's in business. If you have an idea to expand your business, to grow your business, stop telling half the world. Protect it. It's yours to nurture, to grow, and to see it unfold in front of you. Because when you have an idea, sometimes when we have ideas, we think, oh, no, couldn't be bothered. Those are the ideas that we say, oh, couldn't be bothered, could be the massive step in our business. So you've got to know what you want in life. You've got to know what your dream is, what your goal is, what your idea is. And if an idea keeps coming back, and it keeps coming back, and it keeps niggling and niggling at your head, then you have got to open your ears, open your mind and open your heart and start listening to what keeps repeating over and over. If you're in a, a workplace and you want and you believe that your idea could create something new in this business, it could be um, taking the business in a new way or it could enrich the business. It could nurture the business, could grow the business. Don't sit on it. Go and speak to those who you need to speak about your idea. Don't sit in an idea and say, you're not going to be thinking I'm stupid. Nobody's stupid in this world. Nobody. We've been given so many gifts that we have limited ourselves to 95 jobs. The creative side of our life, of who we are, has been very boxed in. You know, imagination. Imagination is one of the most powerful tools and gifts we've, we've been given. You watch your children or you watch young children and their imagination, oh my God, it runs away with them. They can create their most amazing stories and they really believe it's true. When we reach a certain age, at school age, we're told to stop daydreaming. Get your head in the books and start learning. So that, that gift of imagination, of creating, has been taken away it's been put in a box and closed up we don't need it anymore we 100 need our imagination our dream to create what we want and you know we see our children and they be you know they be doctors they be nurses they be teachers um they they be in restaurants they're waitresses or whatever their imagination's amazing sometimes we have to take ourselves back to that childlike imagination and start writing the story of our life. Like who holds the pen to your life? Who holds the pen to your creativ creativity? Who holds the pen to your goal? Do you continually hand that pen over to somebody else and allow them to continually write the script of your life? You are disrespecting the man or woman that you are. Take hold of that pen. And start to believe that you can create whatever you want in your life by starting to write the story of your life, the story that you want for you. Not the story that sits everybody else, but the story for you, because that's the only story you can write. You cannot take up somebody else's pen and write their story. It's not yours to do. So stop handing your pen over to somebody else to create your life to interpret what they believe is good for you. Start to master your life. Start to be the storyteller of your life. And you can make it the best story ever. Or you can make it a Rocky Harm story. We all have choices. Today, I am very, very grateful for where I am in life. I am a motivational speaker. I create weekends where people come on weekends and we unravel the old and begin to create the new because we all have a story. There's not one person in this world that doesn't have a story up to now. And that story up to now has created the man or woman that we are. If you like that story, brilliant. If you're really unhappy in that story and that story makes you sad, tear up that story and start rewriting that story. 
I take women and men on journeys to unravel the old and create the new, to take them to a place where they never want to look at. Sometimes that place can be painful and sore. Sometimes it can just be a place where they have just stuck. And I guide them on a path of discipline, focus, self-respect, self-love, responsibility, because we are responsible for our words, our thoughts and our actions. And nobody else is responsible for it. We may blame. He made me do it or she made me do it. Nobody made us do anything. We made that choice to do what we did. And sometimes, you know, those that shout the loudest do the least. Learn to be an observer in your own life. Learn to observe what goes on around you without giving your pennies worth. I was a good one like that. I tried to fix everybody. And the person that needed to fix the most was me. Because you see, I was so lost in everybody else's stories, everybody else's life, making sure that they were okay, that I forgot about me, about my story, about my passion, about my dream, about what I wanted. You have a right to become the best version of yourself. You owe it to yourself. You owe it to yourself from this day on to create the life that you want for yourself. And yes, there will be stumbling blocks. It's not gonna be plain sailing, but it's what you do with them stumbling blocks. Do you allow the stumbling blocks to master you or do you begin to master the stumbling blocks? Never love and fear of the unknown. If we all knew what was going to happen, if we all knew that we were going to have amazing jobs and amazing business, life would be so boring. We have to go through stones, muck, dirt, whatever it may be to get to that goal. But it's the passion that you drive yourself with. It's the focus, it's the discipline, it's the persistence because you believe 100% that what you have to give and what you have to offer, no man, woman or thing could buy or create because it's yours to create and to become and to unravel. So if you are struggling in your business, if you're struggling in your workplace, then you have got to come back into yourself because we don't like coming back into ourselves. We don't like to look at who, are, who we are. We don't like to say, I'm a bit needy, I'm not sure, I'm not enough, I'm afraid. What is there to be afraid of? Fear is a thought which we give energy to. We think something and we create that fear and we go down that road of fear and we make a rocky horror movie out of that. But the only person watching that movie is you. The only person that has access to that 3D movie is you. Give yourself a gift of self-belief, self-worth, self-value. And don't allow anyone to stamp on your dream. Don't allow anyone to curl you up in a ball and make you feel you're not enough. For me, I am enough today for me. For me, that's all I can be enough for. And when I am enough for me, then I believe and I know that my life runs a lot smoother. Yes, I love what I do. I love to see people change their lives. I love to see people create their dreams. And I love to be part of that process of that journey and to that new way of being and becoming. We all have it. There is no one above us. There is no one below us. We are all equal. And I don't care how much money you have. We all stand as equals. And on the day we die and close our eyes, we all go the one way. There's nobody that gets first class tickets. We're all first class. See yourself as a priority in your life. Stop seeing yourself as down there. Stop eating the crumbs of other people's tables, of other people's businesses, of other people's work. That is not yours. Stop eating the crumbs. Start striving for the a la carte menu. Be your own biggest teacher. Be your own biggest fan. Be your own biggest cheerleader. 
because when you begin to look at you and begin to nurture and love the man or woman that you are, amazing things happen and things happen, they just begin to flow. You don't have to force, you don't have to run, you don't have to be something that you're not. I love what I am. I love what I have created. I feel very, very grateful. I feel very humbled that I be invited into individuals' lives to journey with them that journey of unraveling the old and creating the new, be that business, be that education, be that relationships, be that self-worth. So I leave you with one thing. Do you really know who you are? Do you know what you want in life? Do you really know that you can achieve it? Start asking yourself, what is it that I want for me? Today, you have the choice to begin a journey of creating the life that you want, not the life that everybody else wants for you. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Mary. That was brilliant. Um, I think we're all a bit guilty of not following the dream bus and the out of work. Yeah, yeah, 100%. You yeah. know, we're all like that, Nicole, and it doesn't have to be workplaces. It can be, <clears throat> it can be in relationships. You know, a lot of us get stuck in relationships and we think with neighbour bed, we lie in it. That's wrong. We are not here to make a bed and lie in it. We were never meant to fit in the boxes. We were meant to be creative, to be free and to enjoy. And, you know, this world is beautiful with its brokenness and all. It is a beautiful world, but we become so consumed by the outside environment and what everybody else wants instead of what is good for ourselves. Yeah, we've got a question there. Um, so Neve asks, how can we get past the beliefs of others? Belief or Neve you know, totally get this one. Um, when I started out, you know, I used to, th when I started, I started very, very simply. Um, I hadn't a clue what I was doing and that's been really honest, but I knew I wanted, there was something and the beliefs of others used to choke me up and I used to think, they're saying, who does she think she is? And then I started saying, Mary, who the hell do you think you are? Neve, please listen to me when I say this to you. You are your own best friend. You will never let you down. You will never turn your back on you. But outside environment influences will. You've got to get those blinkers on. And you have got to put them to the side and keep very focused, disciplined in what you want. You've got to believe in you, Neve. And that means sometimes it means just letting people go you know the people in our lives might be only in our lives we might think they're on for a lifetime they might be only there for a, cha a chapter of our lives or a couple of chapters you know what you want Neve. you believe in what you want well you go for it and you do not allow the chitter chatter of other people's words to cloud your dream or your goal and keep your goal very sacred Thank you. That's brilliant. Thank you again. Um, so again, if anybody is tweeting about today or using social media, please use our hashtag EW2022. Um, I think that's all for today. Yeah. I want to thank you very much, Mary. A very, very inspirational talk. I loved it. Um, again, so it'll be available cool. on Council's YouTube, ch YouTube channels in a couple of days. Thanks thank again. You. Thanks so much. Thank you, everybody, for listening.